Welcome to the Peace Over Pain Podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning and welcome to the Peace Over Pain Podcast. It is August 9th, 2022, and I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese. How are you today? Hey, Joe. I got my 90 essential nutrients in a cup today, and I'd also like to introduce my new friend, Mr. Posher. Oh, you got the the rain doll, isn't that I got a doll so that now I can show people cervical flexion and things like this. And this is the same doll that Rain showed us on her demonstration. That's right. So that's very cool. It's very effective because it does get the point across. Very, very cool. Um, Before we get started, I just wanted to remind people that we are today is a special Q&A uh, episode, but we are also taking your questions live during the show in the comments box all during the show. But in the Zoom, we have a link to the Zoom if you want to join in and say hello to us and ask your question live. That uh, we start that at, you know, if we have time later at the end, if we get any. So if you got, if you really uh, are bold and you want to join us, say hello, show your face. Uh, there will be a Zoom link that you can come on and ask a question. So, all right. Very, very good. So, yes, today, Dr. Reese, we designated this show for people's questions, right? So a lot of these came through the Facebook group, but a lot of them came on your Instagram feed, right? Yeah. Uh, you've been putting out uh, shorts, a lot of shorts and reels on Instagram. Yeah, the Instagram's uh, hot right now. The Instagram is hot right now. You know, we got to get, uh, we also, people don't know, but we do also have a peace over pain Instagram, correct? Peace over pain clinic. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to drive people from the app Dr. Dot Reese to the app peace over pain clinic, because the peace over pain clinic based um, Instagram and eventually YouTube is going to have all of us. Uh, not just me, but Coach Amber, Coach Brain, Krause, and Coach Mark Pelter, and maybe even Joe, the weed guy, and well, we'll, yeah. start, we'll start dispensing um, information that people need. That's a good word, dispensing. I like that. But yes, uh, you bring that up, but that is something I'm definitely interested in doing, uh, because we're talking about something that is also medicinal, and that's my forte. I like cannabis and cbd as medicine because that's what it's for so we can help people learn how to do that add that to the program Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah we did get some interesting questions over the past week um you know we could start with some some from uh that are a little older all right let's start with that so here's one are sardines good fat yes Yes. yes, absolutely. Um, all cold water fish are good fat, and you just have to watch out for two things. One, you want to make sure that the fish is medium sized to small. So you don't want salmon, those big ones. Yeah, a salmon is about as big as you want to get salmon or a trout. You know, they're about that big, right? And then sardine, of course, is like that big. A tuna. Or a swordfish, they're they're huge, so they have more. They have more heavy metals from pollution. Humans are polluting the ocean, so smaller fish, less pollution, and you want to make sure that the sardines are not sitting in oil. They're not the canned ones, right? Most canned right. ones, most canned ones are preserved in oil. We don't want that. Yeah, I've seen it. You open up and they're all oily and everything. They're nasty. I've seen them two ways. I've seen the fresh ones, right? And you can find them at fish markets and things like that. Um, and then the dried ones, you know, they're dry. They're dried sardines. So I don't know if people, some people like that. I know Asian cultures like their fish dried a lot. 
So those are two ways you can eat sardines and things like that. But as you said, it's not just sardines that contain these good fats. It's any of those uh, fish that are at least just about the size of a salmon. Yeah. Any, yeah. Yeah. And, totally. and if, if I was going to rank them, I'd go with a cold water Alaska yeah. salmon over everything over everything right yeah. and that's that's known for that you know but you know some people may not have a taste for salmon so there's other alternative fishes if they still want the health benefits and i agree with you about those large fish i remember when i was a kid like swordfish was known to have mercury in it right you know and and then there's a poisoning down here that people get in the caribbean i forget what it's called but it comes from the same thing like from eating barracuda and things like that <clears throat> and it's very dangerous and it's not natural it comes from heavy metals i forgot what it was called yeah yeah so salmon, yeah salmon and sardines are are good um haddock cod right all good right because they're cold water all right very very good so that's good advice for people who like to eat fish but they want to eat healthy fish okay here's another one I'm doing good with all the fake foods except olive oil. So what can I use for my salads? Well, my first question back to that person would be, why are you eating salad? Ah, okay. You tell us a bit of about why, you know, like, look, all, all people who think they're going to eat healthy, right? And say, I'm going to eat healthy. I'll have a salad with it, right? That's like the running joke. But, and, and it's kind of a myth that salads are so good for you. Not saying that vegetables aren't good for you, but salads. So tell us why. Well, salad is just a big bucket of various vegetables. It's going to be gassy. It's going to be an overload of fiber. Uh, I don't really see a point in salads. Um, so, well, and then that's why people want to put dressings on them. Yeah, they're not tasty because of that. And I think a lot of that's because of the lettuce. And, and a lot of people don't know, but lettuce, most lettuce has very little nutrition. Like iceberg lettuce has absolutely no nutritional value. Right. And it's not even real. I mean, it's real. It exists, but it's not natural. Right. It, it, it's a cross between cabbage and Boston lettuce. It's mostly water. Spinach. Yes. Kale. Yes. But there's other ways to prepare that than throwing it in a bowl with a bunch of other vegetables. Yeah, some... Because if you're doing a salad, you're pretty much saying you're eating raw. Yes. And the body has trouble eating raw as many. There's a lot of raw foodists out there that would dis disagree with me, but mm -hmm. They're, they're bloated and miserable, probably. So, Well, why do you think people juice it? They juice it to make it easier to digest. Right. That salad is called roughage, right. you know, and, and roughage is not necessarily great for your digestive system on the way out or going through it. You know, why would you want something rough? That to me sounds like sand and rocks. You know, that's roughage. Why would you want something like that going if you want vegetables? And, and even if some people want them raw, there are certain vegetables that are raw that aren't, I would say, and let me ask your opinion, a tomato, but that's a fruit, right? right. Okay. You're right. Okay. Um, avocado. So if you like those kind of things, you can slice up some tomato with some avocado, put some balsamic vinegar on it. Voila, no oil but you're getting those veggies without all the other crap. Yeah. I mean, you got to be careful of vinegar because sometimes it's poor, poor food. Sometimes it has gluten in it. Yes. Um, people don't understand. Soy sauce has gluten in it. You also have to watch out if you have a digestive issue. You don't want to be eating tomatoes because there's lectins in them. Right. Uh, nightshades in general, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what's going on with you. But people are programmed to think that salads are good. And I, I learned that I disagree. No, I learned that through my digestive issues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I was vegetarian and I was eating salads and it was like, my doctor even said to me, you got to stop eating salads. Just stop. 
never eat another salad. I never have. <laughs> was that a medical doctor that told you that? No, it was a naturopath. Okay. <laughs> Be specific, Joe. <laughs> well, see, you know how many years it's been since I've seen a medical doctor other than for when I broke my wrist? So when I say doctor, it's always naturopath for the least, the last six years. Right. So, um, yeah, they're all naturopaths now. But, I but need, <laughs> the audience needs to know that you aren't going to the medical. Monopoly. No, you know, Kevin, the, the last time was the last time when, when this doctor, I had my digestive issues and they weren't that like chronic at the time. And he already wanted to do surgery. And that was the last time I visited him. I said, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you. I'll call you when I want it. And I never went back ever to a uh, medical doctor, except for injury, like you said. Right. <laughs> you know, you have to. What am I going to do? Right. <laughs> so that's it. And also for this person, I have a suggestion. Go on the internet, and I did this myself. Look for oil-free salad dressings. Mm. Get creative. And again, but don't eat salads anymore. Just use them on a, you know, sometimes you want to put them on top of a, an avocado. Sometimes you want to put them on some of the other actual things that you would eat, but don't, um, don't use oil. You got to get away from that oil and vinegar is the only kind of dressing you can use. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Here's one. I am a rice addict. Oh, that's interesting. So what is your advice? We cannot eat only vegetables. So I'm thinking this person is a vegetarian, maybe. So they get a lot of rice and she's just saying she needs some kind of starch to go. She's looking for a rice substitute, seems like. Is there a rice substitute if somebody likes to have a little starch with their cooked vegetables? Well, I would say sweet potato is probably a better option. Right. Or if right. you do rice, you go go with um, wild rice, you know, the black, black mm -hmm. kind that comes out of lake. But yeah, if you I'll, eat too much rice and, you know, you could definitely spike your arsenic. And right. And you want to be careful of that. But um, sweet potatoes are a good starch. I, they're probably the only starch that I can legit give a thumbs up to. Yeah, no, I agree. And the only other thing I can, what is brown? How's brown rice? Brown rice has the most arsenic in it, especially if okay. you're getting it from Asia. Okay. So you see these, I'm glad we're debunking some myths here. So, because like right, example, so in our supplements, as an example, we use a lot of rice flour because mm -hmm. you need some, you need a filler in there. And so we get it from Canada, which has less arsenic. Uh, so brown rice is another myth, right? People think, oh, I'll eat brown rice instead of white rice. It's healthier, but it's not healthier, right? Not at all. And, you know, it from depends. my experience, it's harder to digest. <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask. You know, some, a lot of people prefer white rice. They say it's healthier. There's no fiber in white rice. Right. I agree. But, and that uh, was what my, my conclusion was. But, you know. It just depends. I, I think ultimately, if you can get away from grains, do it. Yeah, I was going to say that like couscous or uh, quinoa, those things, there are other grains, right? Well, they're, they're not, um, you wouldn't recommend something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in our digestive protocol, there's no grains at all. Right, right, and gives, I personally don't eat them. If, that's, uh, if that gives any indication. So my other suggestion would be if it's about the texture of the rice and it's about like making a dish, a bowl and throwing some vegetables in it with some filler around it. There's a lot of things now they rice vegetables, rice, cauliflower, rice, sweet potatoes. Um, there's all kinds of things now that they rice, just like they make pasta out of vegetables now. Right. Or you can make that yourself, even if you want to. Right. They do the same thing. So if it's about a filling up a bowl or filling up a plate or, you know, uh, those are really good. And the substitutes, they look, at, but they taste better than rice. 
So that's all that I could think of. So yeah, again, I, you know, a lot of this advice is get creative. Stop thinking just rice. It, it, look at what, what are you looking at? What is the purpose for? Why are you using this? And there are other ways to, um, to you make that purpose. Okay. Let's see. Here's an interesting one. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to read the whole question, but I might as well so we can get, we can kind of comment on that too. So this comes from Money Sports Music on IG. And the question is, is it too late for a 70-year-old to reverse type 2 diabetes? And do you accept Medicare or no insurance? And by the way, you need, you need to be a billionaire with all this valuable info that I'm sure people want. So they're thinking, you must be a billionaire by now. And do you accept Medicare insurance? And is it too late. That's the, the crux. Is it too late for a 70 year old to reverse type two diabetes? It's not too late. It's just very difficult because you have to make a educated guess that that 70 year old is stuck in their head with limited beliefs and whatnot. And so I know from working with my dad as an example, that it's just very hard to change. It's hard for a 40 year old to change, never mind the 70 year old. Right. But from a science standpoint, absolutely, it can be reversed at any age, and it can be reversed very fast. As far as insurance goes, no, we purposely do not take insurance because right. we don't want to be a part of the medical. Market. Right, right. I agree. And insurance does not look kindly on natural, any kind of natural healing. No, uh, you know, no naturopaths are covered by insurance unless they put a medical doctor on their staff. So they don't even consider it medicine. Right. So they wouldn't even cover it if you wanted them to. And who needs them? So, yeah. OK, very good. And I it doesn't look like, Kevin, you're a billionaire yet. And if you do, you better start. If you are, you better start paying me more. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Not even a millionaire. No, lucky enough to be a thousand. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. It's something I want to bring up because being on the Caribbean, a lot of people use this. This is from Erica on IG. Does CMOS help with the nutrition, the nutrition deficiency that you speak of? I'm looking for something to up my nutrition game. Okay, so CMOS is the hot fad right now. I and know. The problem with CMOS is it's just like vegetables. You don't know what you're getting. They're, they're taking it out of a river. They're processing it real quick and they're giving it to you. It is not lab tested. Whereas what I'm having right here is lab tested. I know exactly what I'm getting. I know I'm getting 90 essential nutrients. I know I'm getting 8,000 ORAX. I know that I'm getting something that is going to help my immune system, help my nutrition. With CMOS, the theory is that you're getting up to 90 nutrients, but you just don't know. And so it's just like broccoli. You're eating broccoli and you don't know what you're getting because the soil's depleted, you know, this, that, and the other. So I prefer to use our 90 essential nutrients. If I thought CMOS was that good, then I would have it in our dispensary. Fine. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, you, you made some good points there. And I think we've talked about this on the show before. When people are promoting CMOS as a health alternative, and it probably was used back in early times, they are telling you what is generally found in the sea moss plant and these certain things are found in the perfect genome like this is what sea moss contain, contains in its perfect conditions right when they first took apart the g the sea moss genome right 
But that's not what necessarily you are actually getting. It's the same like the broccoli when they say, oh, broccoli contains 15 grams of calcium. Yeah, in the perfect broccoli plant, when you first tested the genome of broccoli, that's what it had. But the, the broccoli in the store today doesn't have no 15 grams of calcium and it probably has toxins in it. And it's the same with the sea moss. Sea moss is even less regulated than broccoli. Right. So yeah, okay. So maybe in a general sense and in a chemical sense, sea moss contains these certain things, but that does not mean the sea moss that you're getting contains that certain things. And because it is not tested, because it is not regulated, there's really no way to know. That CMOS manufacturer isn't taking it to a lab, right? <laughs> right? So that's the kind of stuff you got to be careful with. And, and I would say it's just more than CMOS, wouldn't you? It, there's a lot of natural things out there that people are taking. Um, I, one of them like is spirulina that I can think of or algae, right? People right. are eating seaweed, right? And, and yes, yeah, sure, by theory, it's, it's good for you. But again, that's the ideal seaweed. Right. That's right. It's not, you, you, you know, it's, it's may not be the same seaweed you're getting. And I'm the same way you are. I prefer to know I would prefer to get it through a supplement that's right. made because I don't trust the food that's, that's out there. I would right. love to get everything from food. I would love to have lived in the, uh, you know, early days in the ancient times when we had uh, everything was pure and, and it was what it was, yeah. but we're not. So anyway, we have a guest. In the waiting room, would you you like? We still have a few more questions, but would you like to get to our guest first? Yeah, sure. Somebody I know, but uh, but all right. Hold on a minute. It's Lucy, right? Yeah. Yeah, Lucy. I know Lucy. I had a nice chat with her the other night. I'm glad you tuned in. From Australia, right? So yeah, like 10 p.m. over there. Yeah, Lucy's probably getting ready for bed. Hi, Lucy. How you been? Long time no see, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's my bad. Just there. So. Very nice. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Lucy, and Lucy is a oh. mem a member of the Peace Over Pain Clinic. I'll let you uh, introduce, talk a little bit more about Lucy because you know her a little bit better than me. Because Kevin, you knew Lucy before she joined the clinic. Well. She's a client. She's in the 120 program. Right. Right. So she's a client in the 120 program. And I spoke to her the other night. And she just started her program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a nice chat. So uh, hi, Lucy. How are you? Nice for visiting us. Did you have a question? I'm going to take off mute. Are you mute? No, well, we already heard her. Uh there was a feedback already, yeah, so I turned the. We can hear you. I don't know I how. Don't, I don't think they can hear us, maybe. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got you. So, yeah, it was just. I have a. Go ahead. I have a rash on my back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had it since I was a teenager, I think. It's common. It just comes on. Um, I don't know what the reason is. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's liver issue. Well, I don't. I don't think it's good to jump to uh, to the organs because the organs operate good when you have proper nutrition so uh my first reaction is essential fatty acids so, you know it's possible you have an essential fatty acid deficiency and boom that's where that's where a rash would come in you know how are your hands how are your nails my nails are okay 
Um, they're okay. Any cuticle damage or? You mean the on the side, like the blisters? Yeah, hang, lots of hangnails and cuticle damage. Uh, not right now. Um, but I'm taking MSN. I think that might be helping. Yeah. Uh, when I take MSN, my 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 nail just grows like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it tends yeah. to do that. What about brittle hair or I do have heels? very I do have very brittle hair. I don't know if you can hear it. it. Sounds like plastic. What about cracks on your heels? Yes, I do have that. Okay. What about um muscle pain? Oh yeah, that's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly so, on, on my back. Yeah. yeah. So you see, you know, when we take these symptoms and we add them up, you know, that's a science called symptomology. We can come up with a very good educated guess. But I wouldn't just come what out and say liver, you know. Well, what if what about that virus and people will say, well, you have rash, you got shingles, you know, like the the back rashing ones and stuff like that. Well, shingles, shingles is something you typically only get three times at most in your life. Um, okay. Well, I had it like periodically, just maybe a couple of, you know, um, spring and autumn every year. Probably not shingles. I mean, shingles is, is like a sister of the chicken pox. You don't get chicken pox all the time. It's not something that just comes a lot, like say eczema. But ultimately, shingles is immune system. No matter how you look at it, it's immune system, mm -hmm. it's a weak immune system. And there's lack of antioxidants? Well, antioxidants will, will help neutralize everything, yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people just have a lot going on. And you're, you're one of them. So you got a list of things going on and it's, yes. it's hard to pinpoint everything. Sometimes we're looking for the root cause, but it, it's very hard to pinpoint the root cause with so many symptoms. So that's why in the 120 program, which you're about to do, it's, you know, we, we go after like pretty much everything and you know, you, you'll never know what the root cause is for sure. <laughs> but once you feel better, you're not going to care. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah. 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 You'd be surprised at what a difference just one cycle of the nutrients will do. I mean, I was a very early participant. And I got to tell you, the reason I kept going, I'm the type of person who gives everything a trial. And if it doesn't work, I don't do it again. The reason I kept going is because a lot of these little things, all my muscle pains, things like that, started going away during the first month. So I think a lot of it is you got to kind of give the 120 some time to start working because you, you've just started taking the nutrients. I saw you drink your drink the other night. So you just started taking them. So right now those nutrients are absorbing into your body, but they're kind of filling some of the deficiencies. So you got to wait till they've been circulating through your system for a little while and then start seeing the, you know, then start seeing, okay, well maybe my rash did start clearing up. So I would say, just give it a little time, you know, again. And, and I also want to say that uh, you haven't even started yet, Lucy. So, I mean, you have the nutrients, but you have not started because I, I checked to see if you opened. Oh, here we go. One. Right on there, huh? So you, you haven't started <laughs> module one yet. So be oh, careful. okay. don't drink too much nutrients because you don't want to run out. That's right. It won't be. <laughs> Keep in mind, the program is a moving train. So you want to get on uh, module one and okay. And once I log that's, on to the yeah, or, well, orientation thing. One, yeah. Is once that... Amber sends you 
the curriculum, then you'll be on the moving train. Yeah. You're not on a moving train yet. I yeah. thought I were already day two. <laughs> no, no. Nope. Of the drink, maybe. Of the but, drink, um, maybe. But yeah, and good thing about the, the nutrient program is it does have a lot of EFAs in it. And that's what Kevin is, is telling you, probably one of your deficiencies is. So at least you started getting more EFAs. Yeah. But I would say be patient. Be patient. And like Kevin says, get that first one going, get on the train. <laughs> okay. Well, thank yeah, you. you. I really appreciate that. Because I always thought I have a toxic liver or too much toxic liver heat or whatever. Well, you... I've been detoxing. You've been with life. the medical monopoly for so long. You know, we have to, you have to, you have to kind of detox from that. Am I correct, Kevin? Well, yeah, and- I did use a lot of pharmaceuticals. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Back you're, uh, and you're uh, um, a medical medium fan. So uh, yeah, <laughs> people so, you you like celery juice. Huh? People that come from the medical medium are typically paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> I I I had two eggs and half avocado for dinner. <laughs> I could not believe that's happening, but like yeah, I, I handled it. I was Good. okay. <laughs> Good. And you, and you'll notice that because it's so much fat. And your body's probably not used to the fat. It's just a little adjustment. You're going to need some enzymes. You're going to need, your body just needs to adjust. But, you, you know, we need fat. You know, if you were out in the wild, if you were on an island, Lucy, <laughs> you'd be looking for fat. No question about it. You'd be looking for fat. If, if you were um, hunting and you found, let's say you caught a squirrel. Do you even have squirrels in Australia? All right, let's say you caught a fox. We have all bear. It's easy to catch stuff like yeah, that's um, a little that's possum. a little a possum. Okay, let's say you caught a possum. It's life or death. You're gonna eat the possum. It sounds nasty, but if you're hungry, you're gonna do it. A possum is a little animal. It doesn't have a lot of fat. It's gonna be mostly protein. So what would you do? Instinctually, you're probably gonna eat the tongue because the tongue is made of fat. Right. And you're going to eat the liver because that's where the nutrients are. And it's like, you know, you're, you're an animal trying to survive off this animal. And, and, and so, you know, you're not going to find any celery on that Island. (laughs) You're not going to find any spinach on that Island. You're going to find fruit. You're going to find fish. And you're going to find a whole bunch of animals and you're going to find eggs. Your birds are laying eggs all over the place. So that's what you would eat if you were stranded on an island. I don't, I don't know how anyone can really debate with that. Yeah, because it's pretty basic, a basic diet. You know? Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people who are vegans, and I, I can relate to Lucy, um, feel like their diet is a, a purely natural diet. You know, because I, it's all I, fruits and vegetables, it just excludes the uh, meats. But what they don't know is it's not really nutritionally balanced for you. Right. I I'm, I'm have to say I'm very anxious. I haven't done anything like this for ages. I'm going to jump off just to go calm down. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, just chill. Anxiety. You get I know, ready. I know. Just, get ready for bed. All right. Well, Lucy, I'll we'll have a drink and <laughs> there you go. You guys have fun from here. Oh, yeah, we will. We always do. But oh, uh, very cool. It was very, very nice seeing you. And um, we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Thank <laughs> um, you. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Kevin. Thank, Thank you. you, Kevin. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Bye bye. only our second okay. live call yeah it was very cool so all right let's uh go into our next segment but before we do that Have you read peace over pain yet this short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, 
into video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. Have you read? I just, that's the second time that happened. I, I got to check my computer. It's a little glitchy. But uh, just a reminder to people that you can get the Peace Over Pain book on Amazon or at peaceoverpain.com or just join the Facebook group. <clears throat> but it's definitely worth a, bo a book that's worth picking up. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was a nice little visit. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. I like this. Uh, this, uh, just a com oh, this is just a comment. Okay. You're, <laughs> this is the one. You're, you're here talking about eliminating gray hair. And I think we did discuss that. Who's this from? Luke on IG. Okay. And he says, why do you have gray hair then? No, oh, because I have a copper deficiency. I just said it. <laughs> You're admitting to it. Of course. And look, it's interesting. People, skeptics and or people who are caught in dogma, they always want to play the gotcha game. And we see this with, you know, in politics in America, Republican and Democrats, they play the gotcha game. Mm -hmm. um, you can't play a gotcha. <laughs> okay. But you can't play gotcha with me because I'm, I'm transparent. So yeah, I made a video on Instagram and I was talking about copper deficiency and how it creates gray hair. And yeah, I have some gray hair. Duh. <laughs> That's how I know I have a copper deficiency, you know, and I'm working on it. And my hair was much more gray six months ago so you know but yeah. just because i'm teaching something doesn't mean that i'm not working on myself you know I'm constantly working on myself you know? yeah it's people ex almost expect you to be perfect right because you're spouting health but when you go to your medical doctor medical monopoly doctor mm -hmm. are they in good shape all the time how many medical monopoly doctors have you seen that are heavy overweight nobody questions them Right. Nobody questions them a bit, but it's because, you know what I mean? You're doing something different and it's, it's based on the internet right. that now your, your, your audience is more like that whole gotcha game yep. mentality. So, yep. well, you know, it's okay. But like you said, you can handle it. You're transparent. Yeah. Here, here's just a comment, which I like speaking of the medical monopoly. I ditched my primary health care physician 17 years ago. Congratulations. Who is that? As, uh, the, oh, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting it. Nourish with you on IG. Okay. I ditched my primary health care physician 17 years ago. As a registered nurse, now X, in the 90s, I woke up to the fact that it was all about the drugs. I trust no one but myself when it comes to my personal health. Healthcare needs a big overhaul. And this came from a, a former nurse yeah. who hasn't been to a doctor in 17 years. So she's just making a comment. Yeah. And, and well, it's what we say. <laughs> yeah. And the interesting thing about pharmaceuticals too is that the doses are high and it puts you into a detox state. A lot of people don't know that your liver has to do a lot of work to process these pharmaceuticals. And so in doing that, when we detox, and this includes voluntary detox, whether it's celery juice or a fruit cleanse or what have you, you need nutrition because you're detoxing out your nutrition. Yeah, you're so, detoxing everything. It's not just the bad stuff. If you're on pharmaceuticals, or you're doing a voluntary detox, you need to be taking in your 90 essential nutrients, even more so than a regular person, because you're going to become depleted. Yeah. And that's, that's very, very important, but people die out here, man. I've, I've seen people doing voluntary detoxes and die. Yeah, no, I've heard of that. It's and because they, 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 they forget that. And, and the detox doctors or the detox influencers, they just say, keep digging. 
right? You say, right. well, I've been detoxing for seven months and I still have this. And they go, keep digging, keep going. And then a year later, they're dead. Because the reason they still have this is because they've created a nutritional deficiency that they yeah. never took care of. Right. That's right. It's, it's, you know, so you got to look on both sides, you know, the medical monopoly, we kind of know, okay, stay away because we have tons of evidence, but then there is some on the natural health side, and I'm not talking natural paths. I'm talking on this internet, natural health side or on the books, natural health side. You have to be careful about some of these things, because like you said, extreme detoxing doesn't take into account the amount of nutrition that you deplete. Yep. And they don't give you nutrition in, in complement to the detox, you know? And there's a few other things out there, you know, you mentioned another person before, you know, um, with our guest, you know, okay, right there. Some of that stuff is, not exactly good advice. I don't want to bring it, you know, so there, and this person has a huge following. So, you know, you got to be careful. You listen to, I always say, take what you like and leave the rest. There are plenty of those health gurus that I've listened to found most of their stuff garbage, but one good thing, you know, that I thought was decent. All right. Yeah, you were talking, well, you, are you referring to medical media? Yeah, yeah, you already called them out, but I'm not that type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I found that I had the same results myself because somebody had said, oh, he's great. Well, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but, you know, I don't know. I know a lot of mediums and <laughs> mediums, you know, no disrespect to my medium friends, but uh, they're a little loopy. Why? I had the same experience. <laughs> Why are they loopy? Because they they have a, for a lack of a better word, they have a burden. Yeah, and and you know the atmosphere around that is a little bit. And I don't want. I hate using the word, but cultish. So I'll leave yeah. it at that. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, you know, it just it's like where'd medical medium get his information? Right. You can cite your sources. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and people want, they can go directly to the original I'm source. Not, like you tell where you got this from. I'm, right. not a, I'm not a genius. I'm not a medium. I'm just a teacher with some organization skills who knows how to communicate. That's it. And so I organize things in a way that I feel people can digest them. Yeah. And I'm teaching people things that are real science. You know, we need 90 essential nutrients. It's pretty basic, right? And oh, yeah. We need to absorb the nutrients. It's pretty basic, right? Our pelvic position needs to be straight. Pretty basic, right? Our shoulder position needs to be straight. Pretty basic, right? We need to neutralize free radical damage coming in from the environment and the food with antioxidants pretty basic right it's all basic i'm not like telling people to stand on one leg and touch their nose with their pinky you know like right right and and you know look i'm not even getting into it but i've seen some things out there that come close to that um but yeah and and kevin i want people to know that all these methods that you're using you first of all you try out yourself yeah and then you you have a certain segment of friends yeah. who you have try out with you yeah and i would say i will say and i know this you i am one of those people right and and i appreciate that i feel privileged to be one of those people you gotta you gotta experiment yeah well to uh, experiment. why could you bring it out to the public if you haven't had actual with your own eyes, if you have not seen it and experienced it with your own eyes. Yeah. And, and, and like I said, I'm, and I'm as transparent as possible. Like, why do you think rain is here? Rain crow. She's here because she knows way more about posture than me. Right. You bring in <laughs> experts, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. enough posture to give a seminar. Right. To, to tell, to teach people. I know enough to tell people this is what we need this is what you need this is why but 
When and she, read a P ray, reading a P ray, that's a skill. I can read a P ray, right? But she's the one that's gonna really get into the muscles and really, I mean, she knows the muscles cold. It's it's you know, she belongs on the big bang theory. Right. You know, um Mark Pelter, he's in his 70s. He's been doing 50 mindfulness years. 50 years. Yeah, I've been I've only been doing mindfulness for 12. So listen to him right so right. it's you know uh, i i don't handle everything i'm just a teacher i'm i'm the face that runs the place i'm just a teacher who can communicate and organize organization is a big skill that um, i bring to the table because i'm the one that's organizing everything mm-hmm. into a curriculum type style so that human being can digest it because I came up with a learning disability. I have a learning disability. I don't know what it's called, but it takes me a while to learn something. I have a, I guess what you would call a processing. Right. And so in order for me to learn, I have to organize things in a certain way. But what I discovered is if I learn it, they can learn it. Right. So I organize it in a way. So that's my quote unquote genius is to organize it in a way and create a system so that anyone can learn it so that my nine year old nephew can learn it. And if he can learn it, you can learn it. Anyone can learn it. And that's why there's three macro methods. That's why there's the poor four. That's why there's the poor eight. That's why there's this and that. And I just come up with different ways to make people understand but that doesn't mean i'm an expert on the muscles but you you make sure they have an expert correct yeah right and and i can i can let the steve jobs steve jobs didn't know how to no he didn't know how to do that he had he hired engineers you know that's all there is do you think uh elon musk no he hires engineers that's that's how you do it you know, I would say I, I'm, I'm very much like an Elon Musk. In fact, his story inspired me because he he found a rocket expert, and he asked the expert, "Give me a book to read." They gave him a book. He read the book. He learned it. Then he went back to the rocket expert and he picked the rocket expert's brain. Question. 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 Then he learned just enough to hire other experts to communicate to them in their language. Yeah. Think about it. Elon Musk is launching things into outer space, and he's not even a rocket scientist. No, self-taught. 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 And, you know, but that's how people like that are. They are the visionary. They have the idea. And then they get, you know, like you say, the basics to get to know enough about it, right? And then they get the right people together to make that idea, that vision, boom, reality. Right. And, you, and you've done the same thing. And I will let the listeners know that Kevin is a, uh, an experienced educator. He comes from this background it was way before he was a PhD. So this is, you know, this is something Kevin has experiences in and he's always been very good at. So I used, anyway, to teach, I used to teach people radio. I know. I, I don't I don't like to get too much into detail, but you know I know that. <laughs> well, we have uh we have another question that just came in. Yeah, here it is. I do uh, it's Heather Rose, and she came in from the chat. If I don't have physical pain or any diagnosed issues, can the three macro plan help with extreme fatigue? Is the nutrition the most important part for this problem? Mm. Thank you. So she's saying, I'm not really sick at all, but I have some fatigue. Will this help me? Yes, absolutely. Because the fatigue could be coming from nutritional deficiency. More than likely it is. And the fatigue can be coming from a posture issue because posture affects your metabolism big time. So, yeah, I, I mean, she said she's not diagnosed, and that's a good thing because the medical monopoly will find something. They'll find something. 
Because if they don't diagnose you, they can't make money. Right. So, and they overdiagnose. If, if Heather goes into the medical monopoly, they might say she has Lyme disease. They, they might say she has fibromyalgia. What's that one? Epstein Barr, right? Epstein That's oh, you virus. get tired. You got Epstein Barr, <laughs> right? Right. So, yeah, absolutely. The three macro methods can help anyone, and <laughs> you know, fatigue isn't fun. You know, that's no. not fun. And you know, there's something there, perhaps with the liver. But again, like I was telling Lucy earlier, you know, the organs they're functioning off of nutrition. Right. So if somebody yeah, yeah. says you have a liver issue or a kidney issue, you really have a nutrition issue. Yeah. All the, where do you think a lot of those nutrients and minerals go when you, you take them into the, into the vital organs? They, they, they absorb them. They need them. They, they do the most important work of the body, I would say. Yeah. And so they, they definitely take up most of the nutrients. So you got to make sure they got them. And just my own comment in that, on that is this, this plan that we're talking about can be for anybody because to have the 90 essential nutrients gives you a leg up on chronic illness. So you're doing preventative medicine yeah. and the same thing with the posture exercises. Like most people we've discussed have some sort of misalignment because that's just part of what happens when you go through life. So why not rectify that now? before you get sick and before the medical monopoly wants to give you a surgery, you know what I mean? Or so you can continue your athletic lifestyle. So for me, this is more of like baseline stuff yeah. that you should be doing anyway, like should be part of your regular routine, whether you're ill or not, right. because this way you won't get ill. <laughs> right. Right. And of course, we know mindfulness, that takes a lot of people some time to come around to. But again, during this day and age, it's a, a very prevalent thing. So right. people are actually trying it now. Right. All right. I think we got time for one more question. And I just happen to have one more question. So we can do it. All right. She's wondering why. Oh, sure. she, oh Rosa, uh, you put that at the end okay. from Rosa on Facebook. And she's wondering why her feet swell every time she's on a plane to Portugal and only when they get back to normal, when she's back in the USA, they, they look like elephant feet and they're very uncomfortable, but this never happens to the USA. She's saying, do you think it's the altitude or am I missing a vitamin? Yeah. So uh, this could very well be EMF electromagnetic frequency um, there's a lot of emf on a plane mm. it's possible you know she would have to get like a fine tuning disc to wear and and see how that helps but it's interesting joe i had a client back in the day who had an autoimmune disease and she was messed up in connecticut but every time she went to bermuda she got better mm. and you know, we couldn't figure it out, you know, why, you know, was it mental? Is it the air? You know, is it the water? Like what? So some people, when they change environment, you know, the body changes. I remember back in the day when I went to a seminar in Florida, and I don't travel often. By the time I hit the ground of Florida, I was getting sick because my lymph fluid was really moving and being in the air just pushed it over the edge. And I ended up miserable, just miserable through the whole seminar. Like wow. I was sick, not sick in a way that's contagious, but just cold where the lymph fluid was just stuck all around the ears and the Oh, so like congestion, nasty. Yeah, that's awful feeling. Yeah, and it it was, you know, it was triggered by the plane. Mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, 12, 13 years ago. But uh, 
So it, it's possible that Rosa is just having a, a reaction with the altitude. And it, like I was telling Lucy, there's no way. Sometimes there's no way to know the root cause. So you got to yeah. experiment and try different things. But certainly it could be nutritional deficiency. It could be a protein deficiency, which could cause edema. But she's getting edema on the plane only. Like well, the- well, she's saying she's getting edema on the plane, but what she's saying, they only get back to normal once she's back in the USA. So does that mean while she's in Portugal, like obviously she's moved, she's traveling to Portugal, she gets on the plane, they swell, and the whole time she's in Portugal, they're swollen, and they only get normal till she gets back to the U.S. Yeah, that's very, that's strange, right? Yeah, and you'd think the swelling would go down once you got off the plane if it was altitude. Right. But it, right. it doesn't. It stays during her whole trip to Portugal and then not until she lands in the USA. But but could this be subconscious? Could this be TMS? Could be the, could this be the mind-body syndrome? Because now she's programmed to say, oh, no, every time I go to Portugal, my feet blow up. And then boom, the feet blow up. So I was thinking of that. Yeah. So what we need now is for Rosa to hop on a plane and go to Florida or something. We got to some, see if it happens somewhere different. Right. Cause who knows if she's going to Portugal, maybe that's where she grew up. Maybe there's bad memories back there. Maybe there's trauma back there. Maybe that's the reason they swelled up the first time. Cause obviously it had to happen the first time to create that. Oh no. Oh no. Right. There had to be one time where it happened out of the blue. And, and is and, and and is there something going on with the kidney function because the kidneys are supposed to eliminate water, right? So right, you know, there's a there's a lot to you know there's a lot to take in there. Yeah, and and you know, I can attest to the, an environmental change, making a change in your body physically, and I didn't really realize how drastic it was because for those people who don't know, I left Connecticut and moved to a sort of remote island in Puerto Rico. And, and I, when I lived here for a certain amount of time, I felt a huge difference from the way Connecticut was. And then when one time, the last time I went back to Connecticut, I literally got physically sick from being there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? There was no external cause there other than just being in Connecticut. Yeah. So, and I believe a lot of that has to do with the environment. EMF, like you say, very little EMFs here. And TMS. EMF, yeah. The yeah. What, once yeah, for me, you're right. Like, oh no. <laughs> once you, right. It's, it's the same thing with people. Let, let's say you have a cousin and your cousin just aggravates the snot out of you and they just know how to trigger you. But you only see the cousin once a year at a family function. On your way in the car, on your way there, you might be thinking, oh, man, I got to deal with this mofo, you know? And what happens? By the time you get into the presence of your cousin, you got negative energy. There's negative energy there because there's, it's the mind-body syndrome. And then you attract, attract it and, or put yourself into a mood. And so, like I talk about in the book, the mind-body syndrome is real. And we, we need to consider that with... Um, with our health. Yeah. So Joe, it looks like you froze over there. So that's cool though, because actually the show is supposed to be over. <laughs> it is our time. So I wonder if Amber's there. Amber, are you there? Ah, uh, Amber's there. Look, Amber, you're on. Let's go. Look at the Amber's on and her hair's done. I'm on, uh, kind of, and I got my drink. <laughs> so, yeah. So were, were you surprised to see Lucy come on? I was. I was so excited to see her. I'm yeah. glad she called in. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we got to get her started on day one, the day one module. Yes. Definitely. But she has to meet with Rain first and get, get the posture you know, oriented. So. Right. Right. All right, cool. So, and you're, you're running nutritional tests with people. So if anyone wants a nutritional test with coach Amber, just say the word it's free. Yes. Let me know. I love doing them. And she'll look at your fingernails. 
Yes. <laughs> hi, is that Tristan? Hi, Tristan. That's Tristan. You want to say hi? Say hi. <laughs> hi. All right, cool. So that's the end of the show. Thank you all for watching. And we will be back next Tuesday morning. And if you have questions, leave them below. If you're finding value from this type value, let us know what's going on. And be sure, of course, to read the book. And with that said, stop live streaming.